the Amazon Climate Pledge update. We both wrote notes on that. Uh, I did on Forbes and, and you did on your awesome research site. So what's the update? Yeah, so first of all, Pat, thank you for one of our most impressively fast introductions ever that we've done on this show. It's pretty awesome. Um, there is so much going on. And of course, as we are dealing with a ton of macro and geopolitical issues, one of the issues that sits in the background that most of the world seems to be very interested in and cares about is climate. And of course, Amazon, which is sometimes um, appreciated for its innovation and the things it tries to do for creating jobs and small businesses and climate. And sometimes it's, uh, you know, loathed by society because it is such a big, successful company. But this is one of those things, Pat, that I continue to think is important that we talk about. You know, Amazon, which partnered with Global Optimism, um, was able to announce in this past week a 600% growth in the participation in you know what it's uh, it calls the climate pledge. They have now more than 300 signers uh, that made it a, a 600% growth. And just to kind of give a quick bit of background, because we do this like every maybe six to 12 months, you and I pop in and talk about this. Um, you know, this is a, a few year old. It was founded in 2019. Uh, by Amazon with uh, an organization called Global Optimism. And the whole premise behind the pledge is that, you know, these organizations are committing to get to net zero carbon by the year 2040. Now, if you're familiar with the Paris Agreement, um, basically it was all about getting to this point by 2050. So what the pledge is all about is, is these enterprises across almost every industry now, um, committing to put the resources forward to accelerate their process and becoming carbon neutral. Um, there is a number of standards that you have to uh, partake in in order to be part of this. You have to be willing to measure and report the greenhouse gas emissions your company creates. You need to be able to show that you can implement the decarbonization strategies that are in line with the accord. Um, and then you need to be able to neutralize any uh, remaining emissions with, you know, quantifiable, permanent, and socially beneficial offsets. This is this is a complicated task, uh, Pat, because, you know, for a lot of companies, you're asking them to reconsider, and we'll talk more about supply chain later, but all the materials that are being sourced, all the facilities that they're utilizing, um, you know, if they're delivering services, you might have trucks, planes, ships, all these things create greenhouse gas. And so we've got a couple of complexities, a the complexity of actually changing your business model to support carbon neutrality. And B is how do you do that faster and then actually measure it? And that, by the way, is becoming an increasingly large trend with companies like ServiceNow, SAP, Salesforce, AWS, all rolling out data driven services. Um, Honeywell's doing this on the industrial side that enable companies to better understand how they're utilizing ca uh, carbon, uh, their their footprint, and then of course, being able to offset it. Um, in the most recent update, the company did have some pretty impressive uh, signatories that were added. Uh, one of the biggest is one that I just mentioned was SAP. Um, and there was several others, but you know, we've seen companies like Microsoft, Verizon, uh, Mercedes-Benz, uh, VMware, Salesforce, HP, Pat, so a number of people we work with. And then of course, consumer brands, Visa, Alaska Air, PepsiCo. Um, so, so many companies have now helped get to this point. And of course, Amazon having such a big footprint, such big contributions to the to the world in terms of getting us our quote unquote stuff, um, you know, has a great opportunity to use the visibility, the brand and the massive supply chain that it leads in order to help drive better uh, levels of climate responsibility within enterprises. So, you know, Pat, this is a little update, and I hope for everybody out there, they understand now what is required to be part of it, some of the companies taking part. But more than anything is that 2040 is still so long from now. I'm very interested in understanding how we're measuring, holding accountable, and making sure companies that did sign up for this thing have done enough each and every passing year. And I think that's going to be the really hard part. Yeah, so first off, I really like the market-led approach versus some mandate from the government right and and essentially what that means is if you know if you if you love it you can get behind it if you hate it you can stop buying from those companies right my my hope uh particularly in light of the last 
24 days uh, is that uh, we do this in an intelligent way. And, and Daniel, that's the thing that, that I really want people to start talking about a little bit more. Uh, it is, it will be, it's unaffordable and unrealistic to say that we can snap our fingers and magically get to an all electric world. Uh, plus, um, if, if we had to, first of all, we couldn't afford it. And second of all, uh, we don't have enough, uh, electric, electrically, um, enough elect electrical production that it, you know, globally that wouldn't burn more fossil fuels and more coal. So essentially we would be polluting the environment, uh, more, uh, in order to get to electricity. And uh, for some reason, uh, we've decided at least as a country to, to not invest in nuclear. And I know it's all scary and it's all spooky, but, uh, it could take 40 years to get enough windmills uh, and get enough, um, get enough solar panels to, to, to get there. Uh, I don't know if you you noticed, but Denmark said it was pushing uh, off its. Uh, you got the biggest shit eating grin on your on your face. Like, is he going? I, there? I'm just. I, I know where you're going, and I, I just sorry. I, I, <laughs> I, I, you know, there's a really weird, um, you know, kind of parallel conversation here about what we're experiencing right now with supply shortages and the gasoline. The fact, yeah. and I, I just was thinking to myself while you were talking, Pat, I was thinking we are in such a predicament right now because we should be doing this and that, you know, meaning we should yeah. be doing exactly what Amazon is leading. But at the same time, we shouldn't be saying like we, we should be inter energy dependent until we figure out in 2040. Like, no, 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 it's good. No, no, it's, <laughs> it's good. Um, I didn't know if, you know, maybe you were watching, uh, watching something else. No, it was just, I just thought about, you know, where this conversation could go. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, by the way, did you see Denmark, uh, actually decided to give its nukes 10 more years, right? Because guess what? They, they don't think it's a good idea to give, uh, to outsource their, their energy to Russia. So surprise. Now, one thing I do love about the climate pledge is it talks to about reducing the amount of energy draw. And I love that. I love it because it talks about efficiency. And Daniel, who can't get behind using less, right? Uh, as long as it's through, you know, not brute force and making gas 15 bucks a gallon, right? And, and through innovation, right? It's just like exactly. the chip making more efficient chips that are still more powerful, right? That's exactly right. So. So I love I love this topic. I love talking climate pledge and environmental because it does let me uh, to talk a little bit holistically uh, about this. And listen, I'm passionate uh, about climate. I'm passionate passionate about innovation. I'm passionate about not giving autocrats the ability to put a stranglehold on a on a near term uh, economy. So thank you. Amazon and the 300 climate pledge uh, uh, signees. Let's use, let's get more efficient. Let's use less energy and let's, let's use market forces to, to, to make this happen. So with that said, um, unless you wanted to do a boomerang. No, let's, uh, let's rock and roll. We could, we could do a whole show on that, Pat, but I, I, I just like, like I said, I'll call it this and that. It's a this and that strategy, not this right. or that strategy. And we've just got way too much this or that. But this is a good reminder. There is progress.